Hi, my name is Vicky Hill. I am the Project Associate for Changing Mindsets and a Thinking Teaching Associate Lecturer at University of the Arts. And I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Gurnam Singh, who's Principal Lecturer in Social Work at Coventry University and the Visiting Fellow in Race and Education at UAL. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Vicky. Hi. So, Gernon, we've been talking about, about critical pedagogy and, um, and my, my next question to you was um, f to ask you to expand um, on, on some of your points and thoughts about symbolic violence um, and impression and, and to really tell us what do you mean by narratives of elitism? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, again, I think I'm going to draw on two people here. One is the work of Pierre Bourdieu and the other is the work of Paolo Freire and um, both of them come to this question really. Borgio talks about symbolic violence, this notion of um, uh, how symbolism can actually uh, can render one, 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 one oppression. And uh, uh, Freire talks about a similar concept, which is internalized oppression. Just going to quote from uh, uh, Freire's work, um, you know, his work was particularly done on schools, but uh, he said, assigning somebody a, to a group of superior essence causes that person to undergo subjective transformation that contributes to bringing about a real transformation likely to bring him closer to the assigned definition. Mm -hmm. In a sense, what he's saying is that uh, it's kind of labeling theory, really. You know, once you start labeling somebody as being, uh, you know, thick, stupid or clever or whatever, then that, that becomes internalized. And that's a kind of form of violence, particularly uh, to those that are rendered as being, you know, uh, inferior. And that's also where the narratives of elitism, I think, can kind of work. Um, Freire talks about that, uh, and he said that what happens is that this internalization of oppression creates a double consciousness, uh, which is expressed through uh, the, the, the student, the person being at the same time as themselves and the oppressor whose image they have internalized. Because accordingly, until they concretely discover their oppressor and in turn their own consciousness, they nearly always uh, express fatalistic, fatalistic attitudes to, towards their situation. And it kind of renders them powerless. And since that's what oppression is all about, it's rendering the person powerless. But it becomes a kind of a self-inflicted, kind of almost like a kind of self-harm, if you like, yeah. Uh, and Fred goes on to say, the oppressed have internalized the image of the oppressor and adopted their guidelines. They become fearful of freedom. Freedom would require them to reject this image and replace it with autonomy and responsibility. Mm. Uh, and I said, like uh, Freddy Borgio was interested in the process of socialization, but specifically the mechanisms and systems that uh, produce and reproduce social inequalities, particularly interested in understanding how power functions through cultural practice. And of course, education is a form of cultural practice because it's essentially about enabling people to assimilate ideas, knowledge and understanding. But whereas physical violence could take the form of, say, verbal and physical threats, symbolic violence represents an altogether subtler mechanism. It's almost by stealth, violence by stealth, yeah? Mm -hmm. The victim, in effect, becomes co-opted into their own oppression. And, and you know, Bourdieu defines this violence, uh, which is exercised upon a social agent, with his or her own complicity. Uh, and so, the, the, and what's interesting is the way then to be able to, as it were, deal with that violence is to develop critical self-consciousness and the whole pedagogical enterprise has got to be able to you know engage with the student at those different levels and traditional kind of forms of teaching really contributes that violence you know the kind of didactic you know tell and listen kind of approach great thank you thank you very much